guys. Oh, yeah, might have been a bit, bit much on the AC there. So, you know, we bought this bike. It's 2011 Kawasaki Vulcan for a thousand bucks. And I knew, I knew that it was going to have some problems. And I was aware. He gave me a box of parts. Brand new rear tire. Had the uh, front tire just put on there. Um, but after last night's ride, I realized there's some things that need to be done. And the first one is I need to change the rear belt. Um, the belt looks pretty worn out at this point. I believe it's the original belt. Looks like it has 54,000 miles on it. Should have been done a while ago. Wasn't. All of the brake pads are shot. They're, they're all like basically down to the bare minimum. So I think what I ended up with was a bike that a lot of people just really didn't know how to work on themselves and didn't want to pay somebody to do it. So once the bike got to a point where it was like almost undrivable because of all these little issues, right? That they just were like, okay, I'm just gonna sell the bike for cheap. Which works out for me because this happens often that people do this and I'm like, dude, it really basically needs like the smallest amount of work. But in their mind, they don't know how to do it. So they take it to a shop and then they get their shop price and they're like, oh my God, $1,800 to fix all this? And in my mind, I'm like, $150 to fix all this? Of course, I'll buy the bike, you know? So that's what I do. I, I do, that's exactly how this always works out for me and pans out because then I have a machine now that's worth $4,000 and I only paid a thousand and like $120 a part. So if you wanna know how I make money, that's basically how I do it. That being said, this bike needs an oil change. Now he already bought the filter and the oil, but I don't want to run the oil that he's got. I'm going to change this bike over synthetic because the, the bottle that he gave me was not synthetic and this is Florida and I want synthetic oil. So we're gonna put synthetic oil in it. Um, it's just way better for the machines here, um, especially under high heat and friction levels uh, here in Florida. Um, the other thing is I noticed last night, um, First and second gear pull really well. I haven't hammered hammered on them yet, but I did notice in the higher RP or in the uh, higher gear ratio or lower gear ratio, so uh, four and five, if you pull hard, it slips. You can feel the clutch slipping really bad. Um, if you give her too much beans, she slips and the revs come up and the bike doesn't have any power and doesn't go anywhere. Which leads me to believe we need a clutch, which is fine. I'll order a clutch kit, we'll put it on. Um, and we'll go from there. So right now, uh, I would say oil change, filter. I checked the cooling system. Cooling system's working fine, um, but it does need new clutch and friction plate. It needs new friction plates and, and uh, steel plates. So this bike is in for a clutch. Just what I wanted to do right out the uh, right out the hole was was do that. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Not really. I'm I, clearly just kidding. I really don't want to. Um, and then we're working on the jet ski. So kind of an update on the jet ski. I've been doing some Bondo work to it, repairing things before we take it out again, uh, repainting a few other things. I'm actually on my way right now to get gas, then Ace Hardware, then I got to get my guinea pigs some food, then I got to run to the auto parts store and get some oil. And um, I should be able to kind of call it a day after that, just go home and start working on the bike. So that's I think what I'm gonna do why would this guy just pull up to the first part of the pump oh that makes sense all right so I'll see you guys in a minute let me get some fuel here all right 17 and ratchet you guys know I'm lazy heat your bike up before you go to change your oil make sure that you take it for a run around the block get the oil nice and hot first part this is a 17 we're gonna turn this on Crack it loose and let it drain all that crap oil out of there. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, maybe, pretty dark. All right, well, we'll let that drain. Takes uh, about three and a half quarts to fill this bike up, um, but I'm running, I'm putting synthetic in it. I can tell somebody's been running non-synthetic oil in this bike and uh, there's a little bit of ticking and stuff in the engine. Not horrible, but it's enough that I know that they're not running synthetic, so. You guys hear that dripping? That's how you know this is way too watery. This should not be that watery. That oil's been in there far too long. You can literally hear it dripping. Drip, 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 drip. This is acting like it's water. There's not much viscosity left in this. Even though it's hot, this should still have a lot more viscosity than that. It's running off just like water. Drip, 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 drip. So, yeah. Okay, next up. Ooh. <sighs> Take off the rectifier. Ah, 
That is a 10, by the way, if anybody was wondering. Don't fall in. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't want to stay in my deep socket for some reason. All right, let me finish taking this off, and uh, then I'll show you what's behind it. So once again, if you have a look, there's another 10 and another 10 after you remove it. So now we got to get on there. And then uh, break these loose. Let me do that. Then after you move the rectifier, you can see there's two more. Altogether, six bolts just to be able to access the oil filter. So, make your life simpler. Put them all in a row. That way you know what order they go back in. And that should take the bracket down next. Make sure that goes back in the same way it came out. So, bracket went that way. There you go. I believe that's a 17. Crack it loose. Make sure your oil pan. So, 17. Crack it loose left. Make sure your oil pan's underneath it. And then uh, pop your new one on. There you go. Pop that on out. Drain that off in there. Drop it. Check for any debris. I don't see any dirt inside there, which is good. So, I've got my new Kawasaki filter right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little oil around the top of this before we pop it on there. And uh, I'm not gonna put any oil in it. I just know that once I do this, I'm supposed to go to 3.2 quarts. So we're just gonna use a little bit of the old oil to make a seal around the top of this. Anybody who's ever done oil filters knows that this makes your life a lot simpler when you go to take these off and put these on. So we're just going to spin this one by hand back on there. So, put it right back up there. Twist. And just remember not to go too tight. You want to be able to get this thing off. So one, two, three. Go until it's nice and firm, but not too tight. So now it's getting a little hard to spin, but then again, my hands are a little oily. So I'm just going to grab it, this here oil rag real fast, and just give it one more quick little... There we go. Until it's nice and firmly hand tight. Like that. Now it can't vibrate loose. It's got a good seal and it wasn't put on too tight. So there you go. That solves the oil filter problem. And now just reverse everything that you did here going backwards. This is why it's always good to do an inspection. I'm getting ready to put the new chrome plate that I got on there, but uh, this is why it's always good to inspect your bike. So I'm wiping the oil off and the starter's loose. <laughs> oh goodness. This is why it's always good to inspect your bike before you go ride. So. Uh, well, before we tear up gears and stuff, I'm going to retighten this down before I go any further. So, glad I was looking for that. <laughs> That's probably a good thing to know. <laughs> and now, uh, it's going to make me want to go through the rest of the bike and inspect everything else. So, now that we're here, may as well finish the inspection. Check all the fluids. And, uh, cooling system's working. I know that for a fact. So, Okay. Well, we're making progress. There you go. Here's the old beat up black one we just took off. There's the chrome one. If you're wondering how I got all these parts already, it's because Buddy gave me a whole box of stuff that he never put on. There was the oil he bought for the change, but I didn't want to use. He bought four quarts, which is what it takes, but I wanted to run on synthetic. So I guess later on down the road, I've got enough to do a complete oil change. He also had the filter, so I don't have to buy that. That's why I did the oil change just now. The original headlight, all the brake pads, all the way around. He's got multiple different types of brake pads for it. And a chrome kickstand, which I will be putting on. Anyways, we'll get rid of that black one. We will slap the chrome one on there, like so. That was pulled off another bike. And, uh, yeah, may as well just switch to chrome, get rid of that black, and pop some chrome on there. So, I'm going to go ahead and put on all the parts that he didn't, 
our night ride obviously got the bike all dirty again after i just cleaned it which is frustrating because of the rain but is what it is and then i'm gonna knock these tips off look at i just cleaned all this and it's all garbage from last night's ride you can see the brake pads are very rusty right here and this rear caliper is working but it's shot i'll replace that at some point um we're gonna knock these uh rivets out of here and remove these tips because they're trashed other than that though good bike so and he gave me a brand new back tire for this thing there's the sissy bar he gave me a brand new back tire with nipples and never put it on so you know i think what happened is he just let this bike get away from him maintenance wise you know, and didn't know how to work on it himself. And then when he started realizing everything was just adding up, he was like, oh my gosh, now it needs a clutch. And, you know, like brake pads all the way around. And he went to a shop and he was like, what are you going to charge me? And they told him like $1,500 for all the work. He was probably like, fuck that. I'm just going to sell the bike. Now for Dan, that's $120 in parts. But he already bought most of the parts. So all I have to do is buy a $38 clutch kit, slap it on here, put all the rest of the parts that he gave on. You know, he was going to change that back tire, but I'm like, why? There's still tons of tread left on this one. So, he got a fresh back tire. He did put the new one on the front, so it does have the new front tire on there. The nipples are still on it, as you can see. So, new front tires on there, and uh, doesn't need a back tire yet. So, so we already know it takes 3.2 liters, which is equated out in quarts here in the U.S. is, uh, yeah. 3.381 uh, liters, so I, or quarts, so I can put all three of these in to get me started without even worrying about checking the measurement. Mm, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, see, doesn't that just look delicious? Yeah. Once we put these three in, we have to put the 0.2 in there, the 0.2 variance, because the 0 0.381 variance because we did drain the uh, filter as well. So let me put these three in there, then we'll check the glass and see where we're at. And there you go. You guys can see in there on the bubble, if I lean the bike directly straight up, it's supposed to be between half and the top line. As you can see, we are good to go. Just holding the bike up with one arm so it's straight. Good to go. All right, oil change complete. Are you sure this is okay? You're in country, dude. Live a little. Now she's pretty sensitive, so go easy on the throttle, okay? All right.